Hello and welcome to our Armada playthrough. So in this video we're going to be showing you how to play Armada, which is our new game. It's the game of epic naval warfare and I'm joined by Matt, Hello there. who's the studio manager. So I'm Rob, I should introduce myself. And I'm joined by Matt, who's the studio manager yeah. and he was responsible for taking the Black Sea's rules and giving them a fantasy makeover. Yes. So basically adding wizards. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do in the video is we're going to show you some of the main concepts. So we're going to go through the turn structure, we're going to go through things like movement, shooting and boarding actions as yes. well, yep. plus some extra bits that we might need. Um, so just in case people haven't heard of Armada, I don't know who that might be, <laughs> can you explain a little bit about what it is and what people will be doing in the game? Yeah, so Armada is uh, based on uh, Warlord Games Black Sea's rule set. Um, but we've uh, ported those rules into our fantasy world of uh, Panathor, which is where Kings of War set and Dungeon Saga and all, all those all those great games. Um, so putting our, our spin on it. So we've uh, introduced new, obviously new fleet types. Uh, you don't get orcs traditionally in historical <laughs> games. Uh, so orcs, Basileans, uh, some undead dwarfs, uh, the first ones we're bringing out to start with, and obviously we've got plans for, plans for more. Um, so we've taken those rules, introduced all those fantasy elements, um, and obviously the things around that, like magic and upgrades and krakens and all, all, all that sort of good stuff. So it's a uh, it's a ship uh, based war game. Mm. Um, so typically it would be one fleet versus the other um, in a variety of scenarios, capturing uh, krakens, uh, plundering treasure, all sorts of stuff. Okay, and we're so we're taking on. I'm playing as the orcs, and you're the the Basileans, like yeah. the pious kind of religious. Yep. Holier than thou, so holy they're bad? Is that kind of what it is? Uh, they're so bad, they're good. Okay, fine. <laughs> what the other uh, way around. Uh, and normally, how many ships would you have in a, in a typical game, would you say? Uh, this would be quite a small game, um, uh, which is quite good for you know, three or four ships on this size size map. It's like yeah. a bigger map, four by four, uh, maybe six to nine if you've got lots of the smaller ships in there as well as a typical fleet size. Right, okay. And there's different sizes of ships, I guess. Which ones have we got here? Uh, we've both got uh, a single small ship each, yep. and then two medium ships. And what uh, size do the ships go up to? There's a range of five range sizes. So tiny, which are the little squadrons, which represent just a small number of two or three boats. Uh, then you've got the small ones, uh, mediums, then you've got a large, and then you've got an extra large as well. So okay. five, five categories of, uh, of ship. Cool. Okay, so now we know basically what the game is. We'll go into what the turn structure is. Okay, so we're going to start with how a typical turn structure runs. Uh, we've set up the boats here, and then Matt is going to explain what happens next. Yeah, so in, in a turn you go for a number of phases. The first thing you do is you uh, roll for the wind direction. Now, the start of the game, uh, your scenario will tell you where the where the wind starts. It could start in uh, uh, one of maybe two positions or something like that, or it will say it definitely starts starts here. And what you do then is you place the, uh, the windrows, um, on the compass point where the, the wind is blowing from. Um, so the first thing you do is then roll for wind once you're in turn, turn two onwards um, and it could move. So you know if it does move it, it will only be one compass point uh, round anti-clockwise or clockwise but that um, affects the next thing which is your initiative. And these mark the these locations here are where the windrows would move to? Yes, and uh, you can then use those as reference points to, um, from as the wind's blowing, to move your line across, which we'll talk about next. Um, so you can see where you're where you're heading towards. Okay. So initiative uh, determines uh, the order that the boats then move in, um, and that's determined by the wind. So the wind is currently here for us, um, and it's going to blow uh, directly uh, parallel with this this edge then, uh, all the way this way. And as it, it hits each ship that's the order that they activate in. Okay. So currently, this ship would activate first, then this orc ship, then this smaller orc ship, then this Basilean one, and then these two in order. Right. If the wind moves, so say it moved, uh, say it moved up to here, up to this way, and from this corner, it would then go from corner to corner. And actually, if we have a look now, then at the line, uh, it will go, it will then hit this one first, yeah. then this one, then this one, then that one. Right. So it's actually in a different order. And then actually then that one, then that one. So depending if the wind moves, it might change your plan slightly or you can, or you can set yourself up to predict where you think the wind, if, if it moves, then you've, you, you're you still okay. Okay. So there's a tactical element in that, in in, um, in lining yourself up if you want the initiative for, to move before something else does. And it's measured from the base of the ship? Yes, as soon yeah. as it hits a base. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, so that's once once you've done initiative, then the ships will activate in that order. Right. Um, during a ship's activation, uh, it will move uh, a number of times depending on its speed. Now your speed um, can be well, either you can be anchored, in which case you can just just turn and shoot, um, or you can go at steady speed, which gives you one move. Uh, battle speed, which is two moves, and full speed, which is three moves. And we call each move a move step. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll, sh we'll show how movement works yeah. and what each of that what they mean in a minute. Yeah. So at the end of each move step, you can uh, turn up to your maximum uh, turning angle uh, and then shoot. Um, and then so so say I was going say this ship was going at uh, battle speed, it could do one move step turn and shoot, do a second move step, turn and shoot, and, okay. then, it, and then it's uh, and then it's, it's it's finished its movement and shooting. But the uh, once you've finished your all your movement and your all your move steps, um, if you're within uh, three inches of an enemy ship, you can then attempt to grapple them and then boarding action. Okay. Uh, once you've done that, then that ship's activation is done and you move on to the next one. So it's quite simple. Once everything's activated, you go into the end phase where you clean up the various things and maybe some end, uh, end phase effects are done, and then you go on to your next turn. Okay, so next we'll see how a ship moves, I guess. Yep. This is important. So now we're going to have a look at how movement works, how the ships move, and Matt is going to move his Basilean fleet and show you the different speeds and the turning circles and things like that. Okay, so both of these ships have uh, a move of five. What that means is for each move step they perform, that's five inches that they have to move. And they have to move that far. You can't do a partial, partial move step. Um, now this one um, has been set to um, battle speed, so it will make two move steps. This one's been set to uh, full speed, so it can make three move steps. And because they've both got different turning circles, you'll see the difference in, in, in what that looks like. So what are the speeds? So you've got battle speed, full speed. So you've got anchored, which yep. is obviously not moving at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, steady, battle, full. Okay. Yep. So if we move this one, so this, this ship was to activate, um, so it has to move five inches. So and that's no low, to do that. a low heat, is it? That that's one? the yeah. Gaia Panther. Okay. Oh, sorry, yeah. So that would move five inches in a, in a straight line, like so. Um, and then if you, on the, on the, uh, the card will tell you whether it's a, uh, a yellow turning angle, which is mm. the narrower of the two, or a red turning angle, which is the wider of the two. Okay. And you get this uh, turning arc here. Which shows you, which gives you that you can see that one's a wider angle and one's a one's a narrower angle. So this one, if I wanted to turn it, I put that there and say I wanted to turn it. Let's go this way. Put it on the back corner, and I can turn it up to that much. I could just turn it a tiny bit if I wanted, okay. but I can turn it up to there. Right. And then that's done. So then it needs to do its second move. So we go five again. Um, and then again, I could turn if I wanted to. So let's say we turn back the other way, and then it's moves complete. Okay. Does the wind affect you at all for where you can turn and, and move? Uh, if you're going to play the full wind rules, then yes, because mm. it will affect it depending on the direction of the wind. Uh, it will affect like the speed that you can go, right. or if you switch if you turn straight into the wind, uh, you know it might might hit you and slow you down completely, and mm. then you've got a chance to tack out of the wind. Okay. Um, but uh, those are in those are additional rules for people who want to play the full wind rules. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't affect you. Okay. Yeah. And I guess sure. that just makes it a lot quicker to yes. learn. Certainly, that's you know you can get straight into it. Absolutely. So if you have a look at a full speed one doing uh, red turning angles, you'll see the uh, the difference in obviously just how far it goes um, and how far it can turn. So go five and I'll turn all the way that way. Let me go five again. And it can go. Obviously, it doesn't want to go too far because it's going to crash into that one. Yeah. Uh, it can turn like that, and then it can come all the way in front of it. Oh, you're so just going to miss it. All the way up here. Like so. So actually, so with the obviously faster speeds, more move steps, and the bigger turning angles, you can be much more manoeuvrable, much quicker. I was, I was quite surprised. You guys expect it to be quite slow, is in terms of the turning arc, arcs and things like that. But actually, that one could get around. That was quite nimble. That one really. Yeah, you got to be careful, especially on a, a, a smaller table like this, that you don't go too fast, mm. um, because it, you know even with a, a wider turning angle, you're going to have to slow down. Otherwise, you're going to be hitting the edges or hit, hitting terrain and things like that. And obviously, you've got other ships to worry about. So you've got your 
your turning angles to, to calculate and your speed and obviously judging what the other your opponent's going to be doing as well so there's a there's a, a lot of tactics to think about mm. but yes you can get around quite quick and what what happens with things like terrain how does that affect how you can move uh, well typically you're not allowed to deliberately hit something right but obviously through uh, perhaps bad luck bad <laughs> planning anything else you might hit something Ships, tried to, uh, ships that will uh, hit each other both get a chance to evade, mm. um, and as long as, they, as long as one of them passes, then they won't hit each other. Terrain can't get out of the way, <laughs> so something like rocks or an island, if you do unfortunately hit it, uh, it's going to hurt. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, the, only, the exception is the, the orcs, uh, obviously, they are allowed to ram, <clears throat> so if they've, got, if, if they've got a ship that's got the ram rule, they are allowed to uh, deliberately hit other vessels. Um, and they can then initiate a boarding action, which you normally can't do as well. Okay. So orcs are a bit mad like that. Great, sounds great. And is there anything else that would affect movement, or is that kind of pretty much it for that? That's it. In the main, some ships have got uh, oars, which if you're, which, and, and the rules for oars uh, vary slightly depending on whether you're using the full wind rules or yeah. not. If we're not, so we're, like, we, like we are here, then they can make a, um, if you've got oars, once per turn, you can make a, um, a move uh, a turn before your move step okay rather than uh, rather than at the end oh, that's it's, useful yeah yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, it gives them a, a little more tactical edge uh, if you've got oars like that great okay now i'm an orc player i haven't shot anything yet i'm getting a bit twitchy so <laughs> maybe next we'll see how you can shoot people okay so now we're coming to the good stuff this is when i get to shoot things yeah um and i'm going to move my hammer fist yeah and hopefully Try and shoot your, and is that your Gur Panther? That's the Gur Panther. Okay, yes. right. So I've got a move of five. So what speed? So I'm at speed. Your battle speed. Battle so, speed. So it's two move steps. So I move five. So move that. So straight along there, basically like that to here. Yep. And then I've got another one. I can. And you can turn before turn. you shoot. So I'm red. Yep. So I'm going to turn all the way because hopefully I'm going to try and shoot you with my forward cannon and then hopefully get a broadside as well yep so will i be able to shoot from there with my f forward facing cannon yes so but forward uh so uh, forward and backwards that is your fire arc like that so we can okay. template so you can work that out so anything then in that cone yeah is 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 a valid target and similarly at the back if you've got any rear firing uh rear firing weapons uh to your sides it's the width of your base, so your uh, your starboard and port uh, broadsides are the width of your base all the way out. So it's that corridor. Okay. So anything that's in there is a is a target. So obviously, the bigger the boat, the more you can shoot, I guess, for those. Is that right? On your broadside, you have yeah. a much wider corridor to okay. trap stuff in. Yes. Um, okay. So now we've established that I can definitely shoot you. Yep. Uh, what do I need to do next? Um, so you have a look at your ship card and look yep. at how many what guns you've got at the front. So I've got one L. It so says that's one front. light light weapon. Okay. Uh, so light weapons roll a uh, red dice. We have different coloured dice for the different weapon types because obviously you might have a, a broadside that fires all three types or okay. something. Um, so you roll different coloured uh, dice. So normally you'd need, you need a six plus any modifiers. Now I don't think there are going to be any here. So you're not a you're not a uh, close enough range, you're not a point blank range. So what's um, point blank range? Point blank, if you're uh, within three inches, then you're right up close. Okay. Um, and it's double damage uh, right. and everything else. Okay. And it's um, easier to hit. So there's no other modifiers at the moment, so you're gonna need a, a six to hit me. Okay, so hopefully I'll do this. So let's One. pretend that was a six. <laughs> there you go. Wow, I got a six, fantastic. So light guns don't do, do a huge amount of damage, it's one damage, so I just take the, the one on here. Now we, there's a, a space on the card um, to uh, stack up your damage counter so you can keep them off the table. Yeah. Um, and uh, notice each ship card you have a, a, your, um, your structure points. Yeah. Uh, so like the Guy Panther's 28. Um, and there's also a nerve value as well. So at the, um, if you ever exceed the uh, structure points, you're destroyed. Yeah. Um, once you've got enough damage that's ex uh, meta exceeded your nerve value, then you're crippled. Okay. And there's a chance each each time you activate that you might surrender. Right. Um, and it affects uh, your your shooting and things as well. Okay, so I've shot with my one cannon. Now yep. I've got another move. Yep. So I can move forward again, and that's another yep. five, is it? Yep. And you can turn so, or not. Uh, I don't think I'll. No, I'm not going. I'm just going to keep on going. So I'll end there. Yep. Now this look this looks good for me. I'm quite excited about this. 
Yes, that is uh, a point blank because you're within three inches uh, yep. reward side. Fantastic. Okay. So I've got two uh, L and two C. But uh, C are your basically your close quarter guns. Right. They're the other than ind indirect, which are random. They're the most devastating. They've got very short range. Yeah. Uh, of eight inches, um, but um, they do three damage instead of uh, one like your light guns. Okay. Uh, at this range, it will be double. Right. Uh, okay, so which colour dice do I need for that one? Uh, you need, uh, you've got two light guns. Yep. So there'll be those two. And you've got two uh, close, com uh, close, um, close quarter guns, that'll be the two uh, black ones. Okay. Um, so uh, in terms of modifiers, you've got the uh, point blank, so you're going to get plus two to hit. Um, and otherwise, that's it. So you're okay. so what you were sixes before, you're now fours. Fantastic. So I've got them all at once. Yep. And like I say, so there's different colours, so we can easily tell what's hit. That's uh, no, not. Let's let's pretend they're again. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Power of playtest. There we go. Yep. So I've got uh, all a of nine. Them so all of them hit this time from nothing yep. hitting. Okay. So what happens now? So you've got that's one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Because you're at uh, point blank range, that's double to 16. Wow. That's 16 damage. Yes. So it's up to 17, so it's getting close to its nerf value. And can you get things like criticals as well? Yes, so if as long as it's uh, as long as it's um, uh, it's it's possible to hit, so it's a solid these these will count as solid hits. So as long as it's a solid hit, but it rolled a natural ten, yeah. that's a critical hit. Okay. Um, and then there's a critical hit to table which you might catch on fire, it might affect your speed, uh, you, you will cause more damage again yeah. uh, from, from that as well. Um, indirect weapons, which are uh, up and over and kind of avoid a lot of the armour and things like that, cause criticals on a 9 or a 10. Okay. And then, so we've done so we've done front cannon, we've done broadside. I've heard of the thing called crossing the T, so maybe we'll have a look, see what that is next. Yeah. So we've seen... You know, shooting with our forward-facing cannon, a broadside, and then one of the most devastating kind of attacks is something called crossing the T. Yeah. So we'll just explain kind of what happens there and, and how that works. So crossing the T was a, was a devastating uh, naval tactic where um, you get in a position where you could fire your your cannons all the way down the length of a ship. Right. So okay. smash through all the decks and and just and cause all sorts of mayhem. So you can either do that from the from the front uh, or the back. But you have to have your angle right. Right. Uh, it has to be uh, um, close to a T, and it has to be down the length, down the length of the of the ship. So if you have a look at this uh, Aloe moving now, you know this 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 uh, this orc ship here is in a in a quite perilous position because if I take my move step here, yeah, my uh, left or port broadside is going to catch that right down its down its length. Now the the enemy ship. Has to be its base has to be entirely within that broadside corridor. Yeah, it can't be slightly out of it or anything like that. Um, and the projected um, length of it has to also fit um, in, in the length in the width here as well. Okay. So if you were slightly like that, then you're, you've come out this way. So right. I've not got the right angle. Okay. Um, so it's quite tricky to get this, but once you have got once it, then it's... it can be devastating. Yeah. So a stern rake like this from behind. Uh, is uh, point blank range is triple damage. Wow. Okay. So if my Oloe were to were to catch you like that, I've got two heavy guns. So that's these two. I've got one light, and I've got one uh, one uh, close in gun. So I'm point blank range. So I'm plus two, just like yep. you were before. So I'm hitting on uh, fours. And is it always you need sixes and then? Fours. Sixes needs is sixes. the standard. Yep. Uh, veteran crew, you get uh, well, are better. Yep. Experienced crew are worse. But six is your standard number, and then your modifiers from okay. there. Okay. Um, so I've got one that's missed. Yep. Uh, which is my biggest gun, which is unfortunate. <laughs> now I've got uh, a four and a five. So my two heavy guns have both hit, and I've also got uh, my light guns also hit. Now I've got a, a natural roll of ten there on a, on a dice that was successful. That's a critical hit. Oh dear. Um, so we'll work out the uh, the normal damage anyway. So these are my heavy guns, they're two each, that's two, four, five. Tripled yep. is 15, so that's 15 mm. damage to that ship. Plus I got a critical as well. Okay. Uh, for the critical table you roll 2d6 um, and then have a look to see what, what any addition. So do I roll those or do you roll those? Just... Um, I, I roll those because <laughs> I shot you. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, so, oh, nine. 
So if you have a look at nine, that's major structural damage. The ship takes an additional D6 plus two damage. So you take an additional four damage. So that's supposed to be on 19. Yeah. So at the longer ranges, when you start the game, um, you'll be chipping away at the enemy ships, you know, with one, ones, twos, threes, points of damage. Once you can get close in with close board, full size, point blank, and especially if you can cross the T, you can blow chunks off of ships. Okay, so that means, so I've got a stru uh, structural points of 38, so I'm all right, and then my nerve, is that my nerve? Which that's is, nerve, yeah. So that says 28. 28, so what yes. happens if you reach that? Once you, once you, between there and your obviously complete destruction, you're yeah. crippled. Okay. Uh, a crippled, uh, crippled ship suffers modifiers. It's only got half its uh, half its guns in any one gun position. Uh, it's also got half its uh, crew strength in boarding actions. Yeah. Um, and every time it activates, if there's a big enough ship that it can see nearby, um, it has to uh, make a what's a, a nerve test, which is uh, based on the, the the experience of the crew as a skill test. Uh, if it fails, that it surrenders. Oh dear. Okay. So we've seen you can cross the T, you can obviously fire your broadsides, fire your front cannon as well, but it is also possible to shoot when someone's kind of sailing past you or when you're sailing past someone else, if that's right. Yes, so outside of the, the, the normal turn sequence of shooting at the in, in, end of a move step, you've got, um, there's a rule called uh, fire as she bears. Yeah. So you can either do that in your uh, own turn as you move past a, past a ship, so um, and there's there's modifiers, negative modifiers to attempt it because you're because you're on the move and uh, etc. You can also in, um, interrupt your opponent's turn and fire out of sequence uh, as long as your ship hasn't already activated that turn. Okay, so let's say I'm going to move my blood runner here. Yeah. So I'm just kind of happily merrily sailing along, and I've kind of ended my move step here. Yeah. So now you've ended your move step inside of my uh, front arc. Yep. So, um, I let you get to do any shooting first, but actually your broadside is down here and misses me. So then I would get to uh, to shoot you uh, with a fire as she bears. So I guess that might happen. If if I was hoping to shoot you, I might have measured incorrectly or something like that and ended up kind of overshooting the target, I guess, in some ways. So you may end up in that kind of situation then. Yeah, and it's minus two for me to, to hit you because it's such a tricky, tricky maneuver. Yeah. Now you're well beyond three inches, so you're not point blank range. Um, and I've only got the one gun to the front, but I'll do it. Yeah. Um, and so normally I'd need a six, so minus two, I need an eight. Right. Nah, missed. It's a missed. There we go. So what I'd do at this point, um, I'd uh, take a fired marker and I'd put that on the um, in the gun position that had fired. Yeah. So I know that when it comes to my turn, and then that ship act activates. Uh, it can't fire from that gun position, right? Because you can only fire from uh, each gun position once per turn. Okay, so you've got to, I guess, weigh it up. Is it worth the risky pot shot? Yeah. Which then uses your cannon, or do you kind of wait and kind of think, okay, well, I'm going to kind of sail around and hopefully yeah. get you there. Yeah, I mean, if someone sails past your broadside, you yeah. think, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it now. Right. Okay. Um, especially if they're very close, because you know you've got your your the point blank will cancel out the, the modifier for the uh, fire she bears, sure. so then you're on sixes. Okay, cool. So that's a good tactic then if you kind of want to, I guess, get people unawares, they might kind of think, oh, it's fine, I'm going to sail past that, <laughs> so they could get shot. Yes. So another thing to watch out for. So we've seen moving, shooting, and now the bit where I hope the orcs excel, which is kind of boarding actions yeah. and grappling you. So I'm going to move up, fortunately this Lone little boat here, seems very lonely. So I'm gonna come up and do my final step of movement, so that's five. And then hopefully, am I now within within, kind of within grappling three, range. Yes, within three inches. So at the end of your all your move steps, uh, if you're within three inches of an enemy model, yeah, you can, fine. Yes, you can then attempt to grapple them. So grappling is a, a skill test. Uh, normally, if one or both ships are moving at full speed, you can't do it. Yeah. But again, orcs don't really care. They'll try anything. <laughs> um, there's the slight negative modifier for that, but they'll try it. Um, but we're not moving at those speeds, so it's a skill test, and orcs are uh, great and very practiced at it, so they can re-roll it if they fail. Okay. Now you're just a, a normal crew, so um, but you have got boarding nets, so you're going to be on a, a four plus to uh, to for a successful grapple with a re-roll. Okay, and that's on a D six, not a, okay, correct. not a D ten. Yeah. Okay, all, so here we go. All your skill tests for your crew are always on D six. Right. So I need a four. Hopefully this will. So two with a re-roll. A six. Yes. There we go. Few. We didn't even have to fudge that one. Yeah. 
So the smaller ship always gets pulled towards the, the bigger one. Okay. Unless they're the, the, the same size, um, and then it's the uh, and then there's a specific order in which you move. So I will get moved to you. Yep. And you always go side to side the smallest amount of uh, that you can move. So I get pulled to there. Um, centrally aligned as possible. Yep. Um, and then you initiate uh, a boarding action. Okay. So on your card, you'll notice a CS, which is your crew strength. Yep. That's uh, I'll have a number next to it. You've got four, so that means you roll. You're rolling four dice to attack me. Okay. If I look at my gun brig, I've only got two, so I roll two. And Color just, doesn't matter in okay. this in this uh, in this instance. Your uh, base to to hit to score a hit is uh, six. Um, plus any modifiers you've got. Now you can have upgrades like more axe and all sorts of things like that. Um, uh, you've got because you're orcs, you get plus one anyway. Yep. Um, and if you're the, if it's the first boarding action following a grapple, the attacking ship gets another plus one. Okay. So your sixes, you're now needing fours, and I need uh, sixes. Okay. So hopefully I'll do some great damage here. So I've got one. Uh, oh, I've got I've got two with a you ten. Two. Okay. So. Uh, anything that's a six plus is two points of damage. Yeah. And it's a ten is a crushing blow. So it's like a critical for shooting, but it's a it's a crushing blow in here, and that's four points of damage. So you've done six. I only hit once for two. So I did two points of damage to you. You've done six to me. You've won that combat. Okay. Uh, so do we both take wounds or damage? Yes, or you is, both okay. take the damage. Oh, okay. So yes. there's quite a risk actually, I guess, in that case of, of boarding actions because you might get hit yes. worse than the enemy. Yeah. Yes, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, and so it's, but we don't roll on the damage table. No, it's for boarding just double action. damage. Okay. Crushing blow. Yeah. And is there anything else that might affect boarding actions, or is that kind of roughly what you do? Um, I mean, there's obviously there's rules for if you've got uh, multiple ships involved, um, you can then have to if well, once the ships come to um, activate again, they can choose to disengage or carry on their their, their boarding action. Obviously, you can have um, some. Uh, equipment or upgrades or captains and things might affect your, your boarding and, and, and stuff as well. Orcs, as I said, have got things like more guns and more axe that they can put on all their ships to, to influence all of that. Um, and the bigger the ship, the bigger the crew, and the bigger the, the number, number of dice you're going to roll. Okay, great. So I think that, I mean, maybe we'll have a look at kind of what happens if you might crash into someone, how you evade that. We can yep. do that. Yep. And then I'll try and ram you as well. Okay, good. So if through poor planning, you yes. may occasionally accidentally bump into another boat. So we're going to see what happens there and see how you can evade, or in the case of the orcs, how you can ram them. So you're going to try and accidentally smash into me uh, and we'll see what happens there. Yeah, so I'm, I've, I'm badly positioned with this ship. So I, you know, in, it, in, its, in its move it's going to have to go straight forwards, which means it's going to hit this. So the point here where, the, where, the, where we collide, we both have to make uh, an evade test. Right. Because Unlike, well, orcs love to hit other things, but they don't potentially really like uh, being hit themselves. So, and um, certainly other other fleets really don't like having their boats smashed up because yeah. it's a chance of sinking. Um, so, uh, you make uh, both both boats make a, a skill test, which is an evade roll. Um, as long as one of them passes, yeah. then the ships will avoid each other. Okay. If they both fail, they will collide. Right. Um, with terrain, terrain will always fail its evade roll. So okay. you've only got the ship that's moving <laughs> to try and try and get out of the way. And what do you need? Uh, you get uh, plus one to this. So we're both regular crew, which is normally a five. So we're both on fours okay. to try and avoid it. So, so I you... failed. But I have. Yes. I so passed. At this point, we've, we're, we're okay. So I would I would complete my move step um, if I could. If I couldn't if I couldn't clear you with my move step, then I stop short. Okay. Um, but then, because because the because the ships evaded each other, I can then carry on. Come on I, I stop short. I turn the smallest amount to then avoid you with any further movement. Yeah. And then I complete my turn. Okay. Um, so then I would be be over here. Now, if we if we uh, hit each other, which we we'll, which we'll see in a minute, obviously then there's damage to, to both ships. Yeah. Um, and you both um, get uh, you know you both you're going to lose speed. You're going to you know, effectively anchor right. as you collide into each other. So let's now reverse it. Yep. And do what the orcs do best, which is ram you. So what would happen? I would just come plowing straight it, forward. Yeah, I'm going straight forwards. Um, and you, you'd come in, you'd stop, obviously, where I am. Yep. And hit so me. There yep. you go. Uh, just there. Yep. Um, now I've got... Uh, uh, I still have a chance to uh, evade. Yep. Um, so let's pretend I fail, because watch this, I will anyway. Yes, oh, you did. Yeah, there we go. Great. Oh, it's fated. So I'd, I've, I failed. 
Uh, so you now hit me. Yeah. Now, we, uh, in terms of so the damage, we both start with uh, 1d10. Okay. Um, now, if one ship is bigger than the other, for every size category, that ship gets another d10. Okay. So you're a medium and I'm a small, so that's another dice you get. Yes. Um, and because you've got the RAM rule, yeah. two in brackets, you're going to add plus two to the amount of damage that you do. Plus, okay, so if I've got... two rather than two dice. Oh, oh okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if I've got RAM one, I'd add one. one okay, fine. So they're not adding, they don't add a, a lot more damage, yeah. but, the, but the, the fact is that they can RAM in the first place anyway, yeah. and then they can initiate a boarding action. Okay. Yeah, so they, just, they hit, they do damage, and then they all pour on board. Okay, fantastic. Um, again, do we need sixes for this one? Uh, you're rolling here, and this, this is literally the amount of damage that you're causing. Oh, okay, fine. Right, okay. So let's have a look. So I got so six and nine. You're fifteen to me. Yeah. Uh, and I only I do eight back to you. Now oh. remember, you're fifteen plus yes. two, so seventeen. So I, my structure points are uh, twenty, and my nerve is fifteen. So I'm already crippled right. at this point. So at the point you now board me, uh, I'm down to half attacks as well. So okay. So as you can see, it's quite quite wow. devastating. Yes, yeah, so I mean the orcs. I mean, I guess that's their tactic, isn't it? Really, to to ram stuff pretty much. Yeah. So I mean, I did I did eight back to you, but you know you, you kind of shrugged that off. Really. I don't care about that. Um, but I'm in a serious trouble okay. at this point. Wow. So ramming is all the orc players out there definitely need to be ramming everything. Yes. Apart from islands, uh, avoid well, islands, avoid well, but well, ram the boats. If they're orcs, they might do that too. <laughs> uh, and there's no criticals or anything like that for this one. Uh, not on this one, no. Well, there we go. So there's ramming. So I think we've pretty much covered evading, ramming. Obviously, if that was an island, you'd just be rolling to evade. Yeah. And then what happens with damage if you hit the island there? Do you roll to see what, what well, you get? The, uh, yeah, so this, um, so the island obviously itself won't, uh, won't take any damage. Um, so it causes it, it causes to the, the ship that hit it uh, 1d10 of damage for each size of ship. Right. So if an XL ship hits it, it <laughs> okay. takes five D ten damage. Okay, wow. But if a small, you know, the small ship hits it, then it's only two D ten damage. Uh, and so if you survived here, now we're are we kind of locked in to combat now? Uh, not at this point. So at this point, you you could then you would then still be um, grappling me. Yeah. In which case, I'd go the smallest amount, and you pull me around to the side like that. Right. And oh, then okay. you board me. Fine. And then if you manage to survive that. Next turn, can you sail off or...? I'd have to make a... Uh, well, you're, you're there, so I'm crippled at this point, which right, I yeah, was anyway. Yeah. Um, I would have to try to avoid surrendering to you, yeah. because there's a bigger ship, a uh, medium-sized ship, or uh, you know, within 10 inches. If I pass that, I could then try another skill test to try and uh, disengage and sail away. Yeah. Um, depending on the initiative, you know, you might then catch me up and <laughs> reboard me. <laughs> you know, so, you know, uh, it, that, 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 that being crippled is in, in serious trouble. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Fantastic, okay. Well, I think I've got the hang of ramming. I'll be doing that all the time. Uh, so I think we'll probably just wrap up and, and see what else we've got to look at. So thank you very much, Matt, for showing us how to play. So we've covered pretty much the basics there. Yes. Obviously there are more kind of advanced rules, like kind of different kind of upgrades for your fleets. Uh, yeah, the, some of the different... Um, uh, Ships have got their own rules as well, so yep. specific, uh, specific to that to that ship or to again to that to that fleet. So yeah, there's there's layers on top of the the base mechanics. Yeah, okay. So we'll have all those covered on the Mantic blog. So as we come towards launch, we'll be going through the different kind of factions, how the different boats work, some of the different rules as well. So make sure you keep checking there as well. So thank you very much, Matt. Uh, hope right. you've enjoyed that at home, and then we look forward to you all playing Armada when it's released this November. Bye bye. See ya.